Nana, when you look at UCF on film, what stands out to you about their offense? Um, I mean, obviously the run game. You know, I've been hearing that they're averaging about 400 yards per game, rushing yards. Got a big O line, electric running back, electric quarterback. So I mean, it's one of those games we have to get really gritty, and that's honestly one of the most exciting type of games because it's not all about the flashy stuff. It's about who's going to put the ball down and just dominate the line of scrimmage. What's it like going against a big quarterback like KJ Jefferson? Um, it's a cool opportunity, you know. I mean, I know he's a guy coming out of Arkansas, I believe, and definitely high rated quarterback. So it's really going to be an opportunity for us and our defense to really just go out there and solve our traits and just really be the most physical team out there, the most tough team out there. And it's really going to be a testament to how disciplined we are as a defense, too. What's been your assessment of how the defense has done in these first two games so far? I think so far our defense has definitely shown that we're not afraid to hit anybody, definitely not afraid to not be physical in any situation. And along with just being the most disciplined team we can be out there. You know, a lot of teams that we're going to be playing against have different schemes from being an air raid team to being a run heavy team. It's going to really always come down to how many guys on our team, how many guys on our 11 are going to be able to do their job each and every play. Because that's always going to be the end all when it comes down to putting the ball down. Because those that can say the most disciplined are going to be the ones that can be most successful at the end of the game. You guys have faced a couple of dual threat quarterbacks already now. Do you think, though, facing Stanford and NIU will help you guys prepare for UCF? I think it will for sure. I mean, at the same time, every team, especially like what UCF is doing is not the same that LIU was doing. It's not the same as Stanford was doing. So. Definitely, we're going to have to go back into the film and like count on what we can correct in terms of our weaknesses, in terms of the plays that we busted, and just be, make sure that we can make those strengths and not have other teams ba basically come out and explore our weaknesses, weaknesses and all that. So, I mean, it's definitely great preparation for us. We still need to go back into the room, get back on the practice field, and hone into those details. What are you saying from young guys like Marcus Dillon, young guys like Marcus Dillon and Zach Chapman so far this season? I think what's really cool about them is the fact that they're able to get early success in the season. I mean, I remember Marcus Dill making that big play um, in Stanford that he was TFL, and then Zach Chapman being able to get a couple sacks himself last game. And it's really cool to see that because I know it can help build confidence, especially as the season continues. We're going to need as much depth as we can. And those are going to be guys that we're going to be relying on heavily. And I mean, I'm really close with those guys outside the field, too, when it comes to like locker room talk and just bonding outside the field. And those are two guys that are a lot of fun, and they definitely have high spirits that's going to be. Another just great thing for our team to always just keep us going and keep us always happy and enjoying each other's time. Coach said uh, all practice today and there's a possibility you can play Saturday. How much of a boost could that give you guys with this five he's able to go? I think it would be huge if he could go. I mean, Nepal is a huge asset to this team, even seeing how much he was able to do last year for the team. I mean, he's a guy that we're definitely going to be counting on as long as he can get healthy. You know, we're definitely always praying, hoping for him the best, but he's definitely out there working. It's amazing to see him come back from everything he's gone through. So we're really happy and just really hoping that he gets back sooner than later. Uh, the Notre Dame's got their agreement with the ACC, but this is really your first time entering true conference play. What are you looking forward to about the Big 12 State this year? Honestly, just a conference championship. That's like the biggest thing for me. Being at Notre Dame, I really didn't get the opportunity except in 2020 when we played for the ACC championship against Clemson. But being able to really play for one, the Big 12 championship, I mean, get a ring from it is a huge opportunity. It's definitely one of my biggest goals for this season, for sure. Can you walk us through the, the sack from Saturday and how that play felt? That play felt amazing. I mean, honestly, I remember like when we ran out that tunnel, I was truly like just tearing up because I've been to so many TCU games growing up, but I never had the opportunity to really be on the field, you know? So just going through that play itself, and I had a good feeling it was going to be passed, and we were working on speed of power all week. So that was really the move that I went in. But honestly, without Kayla Fox applying pressure from the inside to get the quarterback to roll out, I wouldn't have made that play myself. But I did, and I was just grateful for that. And it was an amazing feeling just being able to really make a play like that in my hometown. I remember how many people from forward to self, from high school, middle school, like all over forward, just texted me about the play that they were either watching it or they were at the game itself. So it was just one of those surreal feelings that I've been really wanting to feel since I was able to come back to forward. So this really made my year, honestly, and I just want to keep making more of those for sure. Josh, first two weeks, what's been your assessment of how the offense has done so far? Uh, it's been good. I think first week uh, we had some you know, mistakes that we made that we wanted to clean up. And then I was proud of the way we came out last week and played a pretty clean game and um, felt really clean, you know, in my opinion. And I uh, did what we needed to do. So it's been good so far, and we're looking to continue improving. You tied the uh, single game completion streak with 14. Do you, do you get a moment during the game knowing that you're completing a lot of passes? Not really. I mean, kind of getting to the groove, just kind of feeling it. And, uh, you know, I don't really pay attention to how many balls I've completed in the game. I don't really look at the stats up on the scoreboard or anything. So 
um, you know, you kind of get the feeling sometimes that, you know, you're kind of rolling on offense, but, um, you know, I wouldn't say I'd make like a conscious effort to recognize it, but uh, felt like we were rolling pretty good on Saturday and uh, guys were making great plays, catching the ball. And, you know, most of that is those guys just making plays and running with the ball after they catch it and doing all that. So. Uh, they're talented. They're, they're they're really fast. They're really physical. Uh, it's going to be a great challenge for us. We know that we're going to have to play our best football to win, and um, they're going to really be a really good team. So uh, it's a, it's an exciting challenge, and uh, they're really physical and really fast, like I said. And they're an experienced group, lots of transfers who have played a lot of football. So it's going to be fun. What do you know about you know, just overall the program and kind of your tradition? Yeah, they. Uh, <clears throat> I've got some friends who played UCF over the years, and. Um, you know, they've had a really successful history and um, some really, really uh, impressive seasons in the past. And um, they're, they're a group that's they're hungry. And you can tell I'm just watching the tape. They're physical, like I said, and they're, they just carry that mindset of physicality and speed and, and they never quit. So, um, like I said, it's a great challenge and uh, we're looking forward to it. Talk about the offense and feeling the way it's looking and stuff. Six for six in the red zone this past week. They were five to six with four touchdowns against Stanford. What's changed about this offense in the red zone this year from last season? Yeah, it's just execution. The guys we have out there, they know what to do, and they're doing it. Um, the thing in the red zone is you you lose space, and so you have to really execute, and things happen faster and quicker. And so unless you're, you have to be on time with receivers, and the offensive line has to do a great job too. And so I think the big thing is our offensive line just coming out and uh, dominating the red zone. And we've had an ability to run the ball in the red zone. You know, when you can run it down there, it makes it a lot easier, you know, on Coach Browse to call plays, and we don't have to do – um, some of the stuff that we've done in the past. So I think offensive line is just taking charge this year, and we're looking forward to continue, continuing to see them do that in the red zone. And uh, receivers are making plays down there, and I'm just throwing it up in the air, and they're making plays. Josh, it's family week for you guys this weekend. How, what kind of role does uh, your family play in your football life? It's huge. Uh, ever since I have can remember, I've had a football or some sort of ball in my hand, and uh, my dad and mom have been a big uh, contributor to my success in, in sports, and, uh, and and they always stressed, you know, just focusing and, and being good at what you love and working hard at what you love. And it was never really about the performance. They care more about us being, you know, good people and, and loving what we do. And um, so I'm super thankful for my parents and the impact they've had on my life. You know, I remember being a kid sitting on the front porch waiting for my dad to come home for just to play catch before dark and. Um, so sports has played a huge role in my life. My parents have, um, they never really pushed it on me, but they supported me in every way and uh, gave me every opportunity to have success. So I'm um, just so thankful for them and the role they played in my life. What, what did you decide it was football? Because you played baseball too, right? What did you decide it was? Yeah, I think in high school, uh, probably around my sophomore year, I kind of recognized that this football thing's got a different feel to it. And uh, I started as a sophomore in high school and after that, I was hooked, and I knew it was football for me. And there wasn't a feeling like being out there playing quarterback and having the ball in my hand, and um, just having the ability to throw it all over the place. And and that was just a different kind of fun to me. So, I think my sophomore year of high school, I kind of realized that you know I was decent at football and maybe give it a shot. Yeah, you still watch MLB TV, right? I do. I still keep up with baseball. My brother's a baseball player at Oklahoma State, so still keep up with baseball. And uh, I love baseball. I have a lot of friends who play in the minor leagues right now and all over college, so I'm always watching. When you get hit during a play, whether it's a sack or a scramble, if you're over for penalties, <laughs> no. Really no. No, I think last week there was one uh, I saw on tape. The guy kind of hit me low, and I, I mean, I don't really recognize when I get hit. I could care less, to be honest with you. I think I play better when I'm getting hit sometimes, which is kind of crazy to say, but um, it just kind of helps you relax and settle in. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't worry about getting hit. It's... Every, every game I go into, into the game and uh, I'm prepared to stand there and take shots and get the ball to our guys. So you got to do what you got to do, and I don't care about penalties. So I guess you're not thinking about which I play baseball when you get hit. No, no, no. It's, well, my dad, he told us, he get, he warned us, but uh, it's I, I love it, and there's nothing like playing quarterback. It's it's different. 95 to the wrist still hurts too, so when you're hitting, you get hit. So. Well, you, haven't, you haven't been hit but one time this year. Offensive line's done a great job protecting you. Can you talk a little bit about how well they've played? Yeah, they're doing an awesome job. Um, just giving me opportunities to get rid of the ball and, and, and get it to our guys. And uh, they're communicating really well up front. And uh, that's the big thing. You know, James is doing a good job at center, taking charge. And 
uh, really leading those guys. And then we've got a bunch of experience. And I think for over the next couple of weeks, we're going to see them really come together and, and play really, really well. So uh, I, I can't give those guys enough praise for what they do and uh, just the unselfish position that they play. So uh, they're doing a great job and sure thankful for them. Yeah, he's super, super twitchy guy. I mean, he's scary to watch run routes. I mean, if you're a DB and you see him, I mean, you better lace your shoes up because he's going to do something, you know, mix you up or, or give you a route. So uh, just great having him out there. And, uh, you know, between him and John Paul, just throwing those guys out there, I mean, you can't really rest. Those Both of those guys are going to make you pay if you're not paying attention. So uh, it's great having JoJo back out there. I love him as a guy and uh, super unselfish player. And those are the receivers that you love as a quarterback. You know, he's not worried about how many balls he's catching. He's worried about helping our team. So that's what I love about JoJo. We were just talking about the offensive line. I mean, you guys seem to be kind of coming together now already I mean, three games in. Tell me, tell me what you've seen, what you've felt. You feel like the last couple of weeks have been seen improved. Yeah, it's always a big challenge, especially on the offensive line and especially the guys who just came in, uh, including me from, from other schools. And everyone's played in different systems. So seeing everyone come together, especially over the past two games and over camp and really start to, to mesh and become familiar, familiar with each other's games has been really good to see and then it's only going to get better going forward. You guys have done a great job of pass protection. How do you get, get the run block and kind of match that as well going forward? Uh, I think it starts with me being, uh, being good in communication and make sure everyone's on the same page. Uh, a lot of teams will do a bunch of movement and try to create a bunch of confusion up front. So it's really important for everyone to be on the, the same page so we can – Handle that movement and give uh, give our backs some some holes to hit. Pretty stout defensive line you guys are facing this week. Can you talk a little bit about what you guys have seen? Yeah, uh, they're a really good group. They're gonna they're they'll be our biggest challenge we face this year, and uh, they'll likely be one of the biggest challenges we'll face all year. So they got some big, strong, physical guys up front. Uh, they play physical. They play hard. They've got some linebackers that are really good athletes, and you can tell they they, they love football and play really hard. So we're gonna have to match that and. It's a it's a challenge for us, but we're excited and uh, I think we're up for it. So you're here, you're obviously really How does your dad tell you that he was better? He was a really good player. You guys ever talk about that? Does he, does he ever talk about his career with you or anything like that? Uh, yeah, he talks about his career sometimes, and he'll just have some some funny stories. He'll he'll share with us. And, but I mean, we play we play different positions. So I play center, and he obviously played tackle and was really good in the, in the NFL for nine years. So. I think I definitely have a long ways to go before I could compare myself to him in any any way, shape, or form. But uh, yeah, he's a great mentor for me to talk to, and I've uh, been very blessed to have him in my life. Can you talk about the, the Kendall Brown system and how it's different, if at all, for an offensive line? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's very explosive, and uh, I mean, when I first got here, I, I knew we were going to have some good players, but I mean, the first day of practice, I kind of took a step back, and I was I was kind of blown away by all the, the speed and talent we have, just everyone on the field. So it presents a, an opportunity for us as a lineman. So, you know, we take a step back and we realize that if we can play well and give our quarterback time, then we're going to be able to beat people th throwing it down the field. And, you know, when you can do that, it really, it really opens up the run game as well. I know you've got connections to the university with your, your brother answering <coughs> here last year. When you hit the portal and you're looking at all of your options, what uh, – yeah, I mean, ever since growing up uh, in the fourth area, I mean, TCU's always been uh, a great program that I've always admired from the outside. And, uh, I mean, the most important thing for me was I, want, I wanted to come in somewhere and, and win, win football games. So uh, I thought we, we had a great – we have a great opportunity to do that here and uh, excited to be part of it going forward. What's that experience been like for you just to be close to your family, to play and off the fly or drive or any of that stuff? What has that been like for you? Uh, it's great. I mean, my mom's definitely very, very happy about it. That I'm closer to home now. Uh, it's been good for her and uh, other family members uh, around the area to, you know, just take a 15 minute drive down the street to come to our game. So that's been that's been a great a great thing for our family too. How fun is it to block for a guy like Cam Cook and maybe some close up running backs? Uh, it's really fun. Those guys are all really explosive and. Uh, it's kind of like I was just saying about the receivers. I mean, those guys, you give them, you give them a hole, and they're, they're going to hit it, and they're going to, you know, you get them one-on-one -on -one with the safety or something. You know, I'll, I'll take our guys any day of the week in that scenario. So you feel like a 
blitz, I mean, blitz heavy defense, or they kind of rely on the front four? How do they uh, try to attack off the front two? UCFs, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they haven't shown a, a ton of blitzes this year. They're they're really confident in their their guys up front. You can tell, and rightfully so. They're they're really good players. So uh, yeah, like I said, it's going to be a challenge for us, and we need to be able to handle them. And uh, we're excited for it. Talks about how the offensive line is coming together. A bunch of transfers along the line. How you're meshing? What goes into that, both on and off the field, as you're trying to build that relationship? Uh, it's really just. The more reps you take with the guys, I mean, on the field and then off the field, just hanging out with each other uh, is a big, important part that not a lot of people would think about. Uh, but the more camaraderie you can build with each other, I think that goes a long way, uh, especially with offensive linemen. James, what was the grocery bill like at your house? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You gotta, you'll have to ask my, my parents about that, but probably, probably a lot. I mean, give me an example of like what dinner was like in the house. What was there? Uh, just, just about everything. I mean, my mom uh, cooked for us a lot growing up, so having her was was great. She, you know, fed us really well, and uh, you know, Dad's always been been on me about you know get, getting bigger and stronger. So he's always you know pressed the whole you know you gotta you gotta keep eating, you gotta keep getting bigger. So um, and that's always been a been a challenge for me to be honest. Just I've always kind of been an undersized guy, so you know, eating and nutrition has always been uh, really important for me. So that's something I've always tried to try to work on. How does the nutrition and strength staff here kind of help that? Uh, they're great. I mean, they're always just educating us about uh, certain things that we need to put in our bodies at certain times, depending depending on it if it's pre pre practice, during practice, post practice, you know, post workout, all those different types of things. So they've done a really good job. Uh, and they, they take a lot of pride in educating us about um, how to operate. And also, when we're done with football, they place big emphasis on us knowing how to eat, what to eat, so that uh, we're ready for life after football. Because you can't, you can't eat like a football player your entire life or you know, you're not going to be the healthiest person when you're not working out and practicing all the time.